Good morning. I want to thank everyone who watches these videos. The more videos I make and actually upload, the more people watch. Go figure. It's kind of like build it and they will come show up. So, I had a couple of um, rude awakenings during meditation. One of them is there are times when I feel sort of afflicted, whether it's by a very structured society, rules, you know, having to register your car and all that stuff. Yeah. Not a pleasant endeavor. We consider it a necessary evil, even if it takes all your money. <laughs> But the freedom of being able to travel um, unfettered as much as that actually exists, it's a good thing. So about afflictions and, you know, I have felt hidden, I have felt like ostracized and rejected, abandoned, judged, and in actuality, those are all things that indeed have happened to many people, have happened to me, and I can cite the <laughs> references, you know. Having a, my son in cancer, my birthday in July, cancers retain memory of everything. And until you know what those memories are for or what you can use them for, whether they're for anything or not, if they vex you, you've got to figure out something to do with them. And that's where, you know, self-examination, meditation, um, there's all those things come into play. And um, I actually went on Facebook today for the first time in, you know, a long time. I don't generally use it because it really vexes me. I mean, that and Twitter, even though I keep an active Twitter account, but I find myself frowning after a little while or getting completely disgusted and triggered, you know, whatever. Um, and so I know not to hang out there for very long. Yeah. Um, But my procrastination at publishing my book, Music Alchemy, which I wrote in 2015, and then that year I went to Athens, Georgia, and I tried to have it published, and um, I didn't find a sufficient publisher. And then um, over the years I've added to it and have never got it organized enough to actually pop it up into the sphere make a PDF downloadable or something, right? So that's my bad. That's called laziness, really, um, and lack of discipline. So I'm <laughs> calling out myself. Um, but forgiving myself for that will free me to complete it. And also forgiving other people
forgiving those that I've judged. Um, you know, we have this faculty called discrimination. Discriminating. What's a discriminating customer? They usually only use it with that because that's safe. It's not a politically correct word. In fact, politically correct, PC, for discriminating would be a crime, <laughs> you know, in this society. Uh, but discriminating is actually a faculty we use to measure and determine the potential of any impulse we are aware of, anything that comes into our awareness, and we not acknowledge it. Well, what is it? You know, judging it. There again, judge, judgmental. And judging can make you mental because you can't really see the potential, the future, the gifts in anything, in yourself, in others, in your life, when you're in that judgery um, state. And, um, you know, in a, I mean, at times we feel like we need to be hyper aware. And I do. I try to maintain that, but at the same time, keep a sense of inner calm so that I'm just not on the edge, fight, flight, freeze, freak, <laughs> you know, um, at all times. But, the, you know, the more you hear about troops this and wars that, it puts you on a state of high alert where you're constantly, you know, pumping out this message to yourself run <laughs> but from what nobody's chasing me it's in here the prison is in my mind and I can be very judgmental about other people living in the past but I in actuality if someone has a mindset of a certain experience protocol procedure that they've employed and it's something that's worked in other words it functioned you know just fine I guess maybe not for everybody but for them that was their procedure and it's something they fell back upon that's their default how else could they change how in the world would they ever be able to um, change that procedure in their minds like okay let's do something different how would they know I used to say and, and I truly believe this I don't know what I don't know and what I do know is what I want and I've worked a lot over the past couple of years defining what that is because it's so easy to fight and say I don't want this I don't want this but you have to balance it with what you do want so you can have what you do want because you'll never have what you do want if you don't know what it is, if you don't articulate it. I still have to make a vision board and I truly believe that is holding me back. I used to make um, storyboards for you know, my shows or whatever else I was making, producing um, records even, storyboards for the engineering studio or whatever for the, all the crew why don't I do that for my own hopes and dreams my own goals my own life I think it's just procrastination I get distracted but I'm not distracted today <laughs> it's the 17th of April 17 is a great number because 1 plus 7 equals 8 Eight is my power number. I'm a Capricorn rising, so eight is the number of the of the power of eight. Rule of eight. There's a rule of nine also, but I'm an eight. It's 6:43 a.m. Central Time in the uh, the new Temple of the Sun. So anyway, <clears throat> don't take that literally, okay? <laughs> so there was two things. One was forgive those who I feel like recently judged me, disrespected me, 
my pride, my dignity. What is that? It shows a very thick mantle of ego. And we have like constellations right now in the sky. Square Pluto. Sun, square Pluto. To change. Change now or die. That's the motto of Pluto. And uh, this is the U.S. Pluto return. We're in it already. It's not for another, I think, year and a half, two years. But Pluto moves pretty slowly. Right now he's sitting on top of my natal Saturn. So I had a Saturn return three times. And that ended in January. Jupiter return with Saturn on Jupiter and Jupiter on Jupiter and now it's Pluto on Saturn and he's gonna do this like five times this year so um, I'm being really hard-pressed to change to it's like this conflict this pressure and it's not to change into something else it's to change from my current state of structure the structures of my mentality that have built up this prison and when I want to get out of the prison basically I just remove those structures these attitudes that are not helpful and there is no I cannot believe in a human messiah or or anything like that a human divinity I believe we all have that divinity so for someone else to say I'm the divinity I'm the the divinity well we're all tads tertiary Anthropos derivatives and yeah we're in a human body and we have eternal souls but we also have all these senses to manage the sensory realm is what guides us so we have inner senses and inner self-determined sort of structures already laid out before we even were born or at the time we were born and then we get all these sensory information from our families and everything else and by the time you're seven according to Bruce Lipton you're pretty much programmed of what you think and believe and if those things were not perfect which they're not going to be because we're on planet duality right? so we have these dual everything dual black white you know yes no blah 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 binary exists doesn't exist so in this duality <clears throat> until we embody excuse me <clears throat> until we embody the balance then we don't know how to self-correct and we'll automatically i mean we're on a tilt 23.4 degrees tilt so we're not balanced we can't be balanced unless we apply the balance through self-correction on a continual basis sounds exhausting but once you get into the flow of it and you realize what you're working with i used my natal astrological chart to know what i was actually given or ordered <laughs> who knows potluck um cafeteria um but it is it is what it is so um, that informed me about what I was working with and where the problems were because there, there were problems <laughs> the squares the squares are problems they're also pretty intense current so if you could use the squares to create something that would be otherwise extremely difficult or nearly impossible without the sufficient energy to do it yeah those squares can really be helpful and uh, I really 
that's why I study my chart and the progressions and things like that. So all that to say, in order to to move forward and create this, um, my goal is to create full employment for every musician on the planet. And I believe that that's, the, that's our salvation. Because if you help the musicians and the instruments, <coughs> don't forget them, um, they'll save everybody. They'll heal everybody. Think about it. Okay, I've got two minutes, three minutes. We have, what do they say? Tesla says everything is vibration. I think of guitar strings vibrating. But we also vibrate. I mean, what else do you know of where one person can send a frequency and affect everybody within earshot? That's a musician. And I want to teach the musicians, and that's why this book should have been published in 2015 if I'd have got off my ass and just did it. But I didn't have the confidence. Right now, I'm just sort of red-faced embarrassed that I didn't do it back then and since but it's going to get done now because I have to create this workbook so that I can give it to people so they can have it in hand and know how to tune to the golden mean so they can heal themselves and in the process of them just working on themselves it might take a couple of months what's a few months and once they get that down Guess what? They can heal anybody within earshot. So that's why, you know, we do have this crisis. It's kind of a psychotic break that's pretty much mass produced. And everybody's still kind of like dealing with this feeling of not feeling whole, not knowing how to move forward and everything. So it's the music that passive, just receptive, you know, I mean, being the purveyor of it, expressing that currency for a musician is healing to them. But to anyone else, just even passively receiving it, it's healing to them. So that's my goal. And in order to achieve that goal, A, I've got to forgive everybody, including myself and let go of the judgery because we're all kind of in the same situation at now. And what happened last year pretty much leveled the playing field for a lot of people. And it also kind of brought on this humility of, gee, maybe I don't know it all. And for a Capricorn, that's big doings. <laughs> big doings. So, um, It's Saturday. <laughs> I think I'm going to the uh, Pickers Jam. So I hope you have a good weekend. And talk to me.